Hello and welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers. Today, we will be reviewing the hit TV show on Disney Plus, WandaVision, Episode 8. But before I get into the review, if you like the content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell for notifications. And if you are not caught up with WandaVision, what are you doing with your life? This is the number one hit TV series in the world, and yet you haven't watched it or aren't caught up or even haven't, or haven't seen episode eight. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But in all fairness and honesty, if you don't want it spoiled, please consider this your, your spoiler warning. Well, let's get into the review. I thought this episode was brilliant. I thought it was well executed. It was well written, obviously. The acting was superb. So in the last episode, we ended with Agatha doing her purple wiggly magic on Wanda. And in this episode, we see that Agatha was letting letting Wanda see her origin story as far as how she became the witch that is in front of her now. These events were taking place in the 1600s during the Salem witch trials. And it was very different, obviously, from the witch trials that we are familiar through history. These trials or this trial was by her peers other witches that were accusing her along with her mother of gaining some kind of hidden knowledge and stay tuned to my channel for theories on that upcoming and that it was so well executed the the de-aging technology that marvel is now famously known for it was so flawlessly done uh, on Agatha's face and we finally we found out that in this trial she absorbed the power of all those witches that were putting her on trial and she became for all intensive purposes and no pun intended from or taking away from Doctor Strange but she becomes the witch supreme at least it's what it seemed like to me and so after that whole powerful scene, we head back to Agatha's dungeon where she now has, or she has had Wanda trap basically. And I don't want to say kidnap just because it's the, the wrong word, but she has her basically in her control and trapped. And we see Agatha flexing her muscles, flexing her knowledge in spells and magic. But we find out that it wasn't Agatha all along as the great song that we heard in episode seven. We just got more confirmation that it was actually Wanda all along and kind of what Monica told us in episode three, the Brady Bunch episode is where we find out what she gets thrown out of the hex. Um, so I found that so captivating. I was, the dialogue between those two had me captivated. And on a side note, the acting between Wanda, the actors that's playing Wanda and the actors that's playing Agatha, can we just stop and, and give a, a round of applause for those two? The way that we're playing off of each other is why this show is what it is and such a hit. The chemistry that they have with each other, it seems like, and maybe they have worked on other projects, I'm not sure. But if they haven't, kudos to them. The acting was just on another level. It made it that much more enjoyable. The visuals in that dungeon scene were amazing. How she, you know, Agatha, as I said, she was flexing her, her knowledge and her power and she turned the cicada into a bird and then the bird back into a cicada before good old Ralph an afternoon snack. It was very good. It was very good. So many Easter eggs in that, in that scene alone. And, but we see Agatha have like a memory spell where we're going to go back in time through Wanda's memories. And one of the first memories that we see is Sokovia, where we found out the, we actually see Wanda 
dad and we get a little bit we get confirmation if you were one of those people that like me believed the sitcom episodes were a part of her psyche and her subconscious and this show kind of solid or that this this scene solidify that as we found out that her dad sold dvds but before he sold the dvds he would bring them home for them to watch because that was the way that they learned english and we found out that the van dyke show was Wanda's favorite and that's that scene where she's watching the Van Dyke show and the music was so perfect it gave me chills and you could see that that, that child actress playing a young Wanda again hats off to her the, her the way maybe it was just her big eyes but the way she was looking at the screen and with the music and she played that part where you felt how in love wanda was with the illusion of the lead actress in the van dyke show and how just all these sitcoms were embedded in her and it was just so heartwarming to see. And then we have the bomb drop, boom. And, and I was startled. I think all of us were startled when we, we knew, I mean, I think all of us had an idea that that bomb was coming just when we entered into Sokovia. At least I thought I'm like, oh, we're entering into what, what they were describing to Ultron when they were kids and and they were waiting for Tony Stark to kill them for, for two days as she was, re, as they were rec recanting or recalling the story to, vi to Ultron. Maybe difficult is the wrong word to say, but it was very powerful. This is where we get Agatha telling us and Wanda that it wasn't just a coincidence or by faith that or a faulty bomb as Wanda thinks it was it was Wanda having powers and having some kind of power to cast a spell to prevent the bomb from going off like a protection spell which I thought was fascinating and so after that you know she, Agatha's still digging because it's not that's not what she's looking for she wants to know how wanda created everything the hex because it's like i said earlier it is it's not agatha agatha's just the one trying to find out wanda's the one controlling the town controlling the movements going from episode to episode from era to era it's all wanda that's controlling this and agatha just basically wants to retrace her steps to find out how wanda created this and you almost get a sense that she's trying to help wanda at this point because just you could see wanda's guard coming down and she's describing hey you know this is that and stuff like that and agatha is kind of guiding her through it which i thought it was a good homage to the comic because in the comic agatha actually teaches wanda some of her magic and we see her teaching her in a way so i thought that was a nice little homage to the comics but after that we find out we, we, we go into her memory a little bit more and into the events of pre-age of ultron but we we find we see her when she volunteered for hydra to be experimented on and we see what wanda saw how the mind stone enhanced her power because if we are to take agatha at her word which i'm not sure if we should but let's just say for sake of argument that we take her at her at her word wanda already had power and the stone amplified it and that whole dark scene i love the whole horror aspect they have to that which is staying true to age of ultron and i thought it was brilliant the way they they kept the same feel to it and wow, that vision that she had when, when the Mind Stone breaks free from its casing and we see a silhouette of Scarlet Witch and all her power, I, you know, that was awesome to see. But still, Agatha needs more. She needs to find out more. It's not enough. So she digs more. And now we're, we're in the Avengers um, compound after the events of age of ultron obviously wanda is in, in grieving her dead brother but we get to see at least what the tv show saying even though i i've been saying that she was 
controlling vision from his inception, from the time he was created. But if you don't subscribe to that theory, then this is the episode that where you see how Wanda and Vision relationship started blossoming into into a little bit more. And on a side note, I thought a nice little Easter egg where we see that she's watching. I think it's Malcolm in the Middle at this point. But there's a shot where you see the, the DVDs and it's I Love Lucy, the same ones that she had, the kind of the same DVDs that we saw in Sokovia. So I'm, I'm wondering if she kept the the DVDs or did she rebuy them to kind of have a sense of home? I want to believe that she kept, I rather believe that she kept them. It, that way it makes it a little bit more impactful, kind of a, like a, something to keep her grounded, to keep a memory of her dad and mom alive, kind of like a homage to them because that's what they did to learn English. So I want to believe that's the case. And if, if, if it's true, let me know in the comments that maybe I just missed the part. So we see that and then, but still, you know, not enough. She says, you know, th after this, you were so alone and you wanted Vision's body back. So then from that scene, we jump right into the sword compound where we had that footage a few episodes back in WandaVision where Hayward tells the, tells the team that Wanda went into the facility and stole Vision bodies. But here we find out that Hayward is just the lying little rat and that he was just making up stuff for i guess we'll find out in the, in the near future why why he was lying or why he needed why he felt he needed to lie about that but we found out that he basically wanted wanda to come in and not steal him but revive him you have the power to basically bring him back to life and, and Wanda looks at him like I, I'm not here for that I'm here to take him and, and bury him and you know I'm because I'm, he's the love of my life and I deserve that and Hayward just basically goes nope he's staying here you're not going to take three billion dollars worth of vibranium and you could say bye to him here and we see Wanda freak out because they're like grinding on him and tearing him apart so she basically breaks the window goes down there and that scene where she's touching his head and says, I can't feel you. And, and the tears come down her face. And I've said this before. She is just a great actress. The way she can make herself cry and her visuals in her face, the way she, she, she lets us know through her, through her face, how she feels. And I know that sounds weird, but if you're an actress or an actor, you know what I'm talking about. The way she's able to, to project through her tears, through her, through her lip quivering is just so, so well done and so well executed. And, and while I'm on this too, uh, on a different side note, I, I, I said on a preview in a previous review of WandaVision that Hayward is entering into Joffrey levels of hating him. I think in this episode, he's there. I think we all can agree. We hate him. We don't like the dude. He's such a dirty little rat and how he was trying to bait Wanda into bringing him back to life just so he could have his sentient weapon because he's so afraid of the events that happened with when Thanos snapped. I mean, I think all of us are, are com in a complete 100% agree agreement that we all hate this dude. But my hat's off to, to the actor playing him just like the actor that was playing Joffrey, they play that role so good that it just, it just, it, it sinks into our mind and our anger just skyrockets. But what I found more interesting about this scene is that Wanda doesn't steal him because she can't feel him. She says, I can't feel you. And she says it twice with the tears running down her, her face and she just leaves the compound without vision uh then we find out that she gets in her car and that's when we find out that how she got to westview and we found out that vision had bought like land and had and gave wanda the deed for their dream house and when we see as she's driving through westview all those actors and you know the lookalike of ross and the, the, the woman, you know, the lady from the 70s show in the first episode where she's saying, stop it. And can I actually can, can uh, you know, the stop it part we see now where where she created that 
just because when she was looking at them dismantling Vision, you hear her say the same thing that the, the, the we, we heard in the first three episodes with the stop it, stop it, is because that's what Wanda, it was so impactful in Wanda's mind when she saw that they were doing that to Vision. And so it was a nice little Easter egg, I thought, or a nice little added surprise if you were paying attention to, to that, where that stop it came from. It was from that moment where she just wanted them to stop doing that to Vision's corpse. But anyway, so we see a lot of those extras, if you may, in the city. And the city is not as glamorous. And now we see how Pedro, Pedro or fake Pedro, Fiedro, as, as Agatha mentioned, uh, when he says, hey, this is an upgrade. You know, they gave them better jobs. We, you gave them better life stories. And it's kind of similar to what they had, but you definitely upgraded. And you could see what he meant because the city was not, it didn't look like anybody was happy. It looked like the city was struggling. It was, it was kind of run down before Wanda got there. But anyways, I thought that was interesting, uh, but we get there and it's just like the, not even the foundation. It's just the shell of the foundation basically. And Wanda opens the deed and you see that note that vision wrote for, you know, for us to grow old or something like that. And you know, he puts a V with a heart around it. And that was just heartbreaking for me to watch. And even more heartbreaking for Wanda, as we saw, she broke down and the magic just bursted from her, from her heart and from her hands. And this is how we find out how she created the home. And then when she created the home, she created the hex that covered the whole uh, city and took it over. And we see the power and her grief that created vision or the version of vision inside the hex that we see created through her grief. Uh, and then we see after, after all this, this creation that, that Wanda does, she steps into that, you know, reality that she created. Then finally, Agatha finds out what the information that she needed. So then she, Agatha leaves and now we, we hear that her, her kids, uh, her boys asking for her because, oh, surprise, surprise, Agatha has them kind of tied up and Agatha's saying, you're dangerous. You, you know, your power is out of control and you're, you're like a mythical being that shouldn't exist basically. And basically tells Wanda that you, you're, you're dangerous and you need to be, to be stopped. And she says it's chaos magic, basically magic that cannot be controlled. And she has the power to create things. So begs to, di you know, the question then is, is raised whether the kids are real since she can create, you know, she created them. Uh, at least that's what we we're assuming. So are they real? And we definitely know that she created vision. So does that mean that vision is real? But then that begs the question to why he was disintegrating in uh, the prior episodes when he stepped out of the hex, which I'm, I'm assuming they're going to answer in episode nine. So we see, we see this standoff and then boom, the, 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 the episode ends. And then we get that mid credit scene even one more time. This is, I think this, they're just going back to it. They just went away from it for a little bit, but we're, we have back to back mid credit scenes. And here we find out Hayward's plan to, to his attack. I mean, we had found out too, when, when Wanda expanded the hex to save vision, I think it was in the Halloween episode. When he expand, when she expanded the hex, they had to move. But we found they had to move the base, obviously. But we found out in later episode that they were going to plan an attack. Something was gonna, they were gonna, they were gonna go in and try to try to end this. And we found out that his secret weapon was the White Vision, the comic book accurate White Vision. And I'm super excited to see if the theory is correct. And I put this theory out too, where I, you know, go back, check out that video where I say that vision is Ultron or Ultron is vision. And maybe this is it. And we're going to, we're going to, the payoff is going to be. And when white vision opens his mouth, when we hear Ultron come out of that, I think it's going to send all a shiver down our spines. And I just can't wait to see episode eight and what else they have in store. 
I mean, it was just brilliant to see. I was on the edge of my seat in anticipation, in mystery, and in just pure enjoyment. So this episode, five out of five, great. I can't, I can't stop raving about it. We're just lucky to be able to be watching this and enjoying great acting, great production, just an overall great product. And what a great story that they are that they are telling. The way they are adapting so many storylines and and just executing it flawlessly. I completely enjoy and again can't wait to see episode nine. So let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Did you guys enjoy it as much as I did? Did you find some things wrong with it? Is there things that maybe you would have changed? I don't know. Let me know. Let's let's talk about it. But with that said, like always, that's a wrap.